Hey guys, what's going on? Today, I want to ask the question, if I were to restart my consulting company today, what exactly would I do different in order to ensure that I would be successful at a much more rapid rate than I have been currently? And what lessons have I kind of learned along the way that I can kind of give back to you guys so you can also answer the same question if you're looking to start a consulting company, whether it be in something like data science or data engineering, it really doesn't matter. It's really all agnostic when it comes to consulting in terms of the fact that I could give this advice to someone looking to start a digital marketing consulting company, or maybe like a social media consulting company, or maybe like a writing consulting company. Company. It's all about the same because at the end of the day, consulting is all about finding some sort of solution that you have, whether it's some sort of special knowledge or information that you know that you can then apply to businesses because they have this problem consistently. Again, like social media marketing, content marketing, or content creation. Also, again, for in my case, data engineering and data science, all of which are constant problems for businesses of all sizes. So it's often very easy to find consulting opportunities. So here's what I would do differently in order to supercharge my way to some sort of successful consulting company. First, and you're gonna often read this in almost any book you read about consulting, which is you need to pick a niche. And now this is a little bit hard in terms of tips to do because sometimes you just don't even necessarily know what niche you want to go into. For example, when I first started, I thought I wanted to do a lot of data science work. And if you look at the articles I was writing back then, all of them were focused on data science and data analytics a lot more than things like data engineering. But as I started getting clients, I first realized that I kind of enjoyed data engineering work more and two, realized there was honestly just a ton more data engineering work out there. And to be clear, picking data science or data engineering isn't really niching down. Those are both super broad topics. If you look at data science, there's just a ton of different concepts you could focus on. Everything from like natural language processing to computer vision to just general kind of data science concepts. And that in itself is very broad. You could even niche down even harder and specialize in something like healthcare fraud or credit card risk management. So there really are a lot of niches that you could really drill into. Even in data engineering, you could focus more on the data management or data modeling side or look towards the data solution side. So it's really broad in terms of solutions you're trying to offer. And the more you can kind of just niche down and find particular things that people constantly either Google or look for help on, and the more you can either write around that area or try to offer services in that specific area, the more likely you are gonna get clients that are going to hit that exact point, whether they're searching it or when they do find you, they just resonate with that problem you're trying to solve. And this will kind of speed up the pace in terms of making sure you get clients as well as hopefully increasing that proposal acceptance rate. For example, currently I've noticed a lot of clients have been focusing a lot on Snowflake recently. So I've focused a lot of my content in that area and have been getting a lot of clients that are asking questions about Snowflake and how to operate it and how to optimize it. Because because again, if I put a lot of articles out there that discuss Snowflake, people are going to Google it, find it, and likely come to me for advice on it. So the more you can figure out what problems people have, the more you can niche down into that area, and the more hopefully people will reach out to you and you have the opportunity to solve it. The problem is most of us offer way too broad of services, and we don't really want to give up any bit of land to some possibility of losing out a client, right? Like you just want to do it all because you don't know what a client's going to ask for. But if a client doesn't feel like you exactly answer the need or solution that they're looking for, they might not actually click on you or send you an email because they're not even sure what you do. But if you have a clear and concise message of the problems you're trying to solve or have articles that are around a specific topic that they're clearly looking into, you're likely to kind of have them reach out to you because they already know that you talk about this solution and you're passionate about it. So early on, it's, I think, okay to be a little bit broad, but start trying to niche down and figure out what exactly you're offering in terms of solutions. So that way people are clear when they come to your site, because if you don't know what you're offering, how are they supposed to know what you're offering? Next, I would recommend having some sort of basic systems in place. And now this is kind of a weird concept because you might not even know what I mean, but everything from how you onboard a client to how you deal with billing is really important in terms of just making sure you have a smooth workflow. It seems like small things, like things you can deal with later. You know, what will you need when you onboard a client? You know, oh, you'll deal with billing later, but making sure that you have these kind of set up early on, especially if it's clear at the proposal stage of how things will be operating, it just allows your relationship with your client to be that much more smooth and it just comes off as way more professional. Also, then you won't end up like me trying to juggle way too many billing softwares. And for my first few clients, not even really realizing what I need to ask for in terms of like setting up emails and connections to the right systems. The more you can kind of have that all smoothly laid out, the easier it will be on you and the less overhead you have over these little things that have nothing to do with your day-to-day -day actual offerings in terms of consulting and more that you just streamline it away from you. And also, if someday in the future you need to expand your business, it's really easy to hand over those processes to someone else other than yourself so that you can focus on the main things that you are actually interested in. Also, another thing that you'll end up figuring out is that your client really doesn't have 
any idea how they're supposed to work with you. I think part of me when I was younger assumed that clients would just have a way to work with consultants, but every consultant is different and every consultant's workflow is different. So if you're not clear and concise with your client on how you actually operate, they're just gonna expect you to kind of do things. But if you clearly lay out that, hey, we're gonna have a meeting once or twice a week, we're gonna have you know this stuff done for onboarding, we're gonna have bills coming on this day with this kind of terms, then they're just gonna kind of be left wondering. And you wanna remove all of that kind of wondering and just make sure it's clear and concise how you operate. Because again, it makes you look more professional and it will be better for you, I promise. Next is networking and partnerships. And these are both somewhat related because they both involve creating some sort of relationship with either other consultants that are doing similar work to you or maybe work that's somewhat adjacent to you. So for example, perhaps you know a Salesforce consultant. Well, oftentimes where there is Salesforce, you will need some sort of data warehousing or data engineering work. So if they are consulting in that space, you can kind of tag along with them and see if they need extra services along the way. And in the same way, you can kind of offer them the occasional project that involves their specialization. And with that, you're starting to create this network of consultants that all give each other work and that you all know and trust and rely on because that's really hard to find, especially when it comes to things like subcontractors and consulting partnerships. You don't know who's out there. You don't know their work quality. And it's really good to kind of just make sure you pin that down and find people that you can really rely on in terms of other work that might be similar to yours, but maybe you don't specialize in. Partnerships, on the other hand, is where you partner with companies that maybe have some sort of service. Now, for me, being in data engineering, this is kind of really easy because it fits into the whole solution architect, solution uh, partner realm of consulting, where you often partner with products to help them either sell their product, and then they also help you by providing you clients who maybe need some help implementing their services. And since they don't have a giant consulting team, they will just pay you when they need you. This benefits both players, because again, if you see a place where their product fits well, you can provide it as an option. And when they see somewhere that you'll fit well, in terms of a client needing a solution, they'll offer your services. And it's really a great give and take relationship that I didn't really figure out until about eight months ago or a year ago. And it's definitely increased my acceptance rate in terms of proposals, which has been great because for anyone who's been out there writing proposals, it takes a long time. And oftentimes if it doesn't get accepted, it really kind of sucks because you have to make a new one for every single client. So if you hated writing cover letters, you're going to hate writing proposals as well, because these tend to be much longer and much more detailed and almost to the point of writing out an exact project plan of what you're going to do for your client. So imagine spending, you know, three to five hours writing out a nice proposal only to have it slammed in your face or on the flip side, have no response whatsoever back from the client because they decided to go with someone either cheaper or more experienced or someone that was already in their network that they had already decided on. So having a higher acceptance rate is just great for morale because then you don't feel like you're wasting your time just putting out proposals, hoping someone's going to accept it. Now, something that I'm hoping for is something that you can help me out with, which is just take a moment to smash that like button. You know, I'm really trying to go to 10,000 subscribers and we're definitely gonna get there probably in the next month, but the faster we do, the better I feel. So help us out and help appease the YouTube algorithm. And for those still here, here's my final tip, which is make sure you have decision makers on the call eventually when you're trying to set up proposals, because if you don't have decision makers on the call, your proposals are eventually gonna end up in their lap anyways. And the more you can get them seeing your face, understanding who you are, understanding what you're offering, understanding your value in person versus just some paper proposal that they're just gonna get from their associate, the more likely you are going to land that client. The more you can get at that VP or director level with those proposals, the more likely you're gonna hear yeses because they kind of know you a little bit. It's all about that relationship game at the end of the day. Do they even trust you as a person? Do they wanna work with you? Those are definite questions they're gonna have in their brain as you're trying to sell them on a product especially once you start hopefully selling those higher ticket items so that you're not having to take on 10 clients at one time to make ends meet, but instead I can start focusing on that three to five clients that you're hopefully only taking on a month so that you can maximize that ROI for your time while also maximizing the projects and work that you're doing for your clients. So those are my reflections in terms of if I were to set up a new data science or data engineering consulting company today, or again, really any consulting company, make sure you spend some time figuring out what your niche is, setting up the right systems, networking and partnering, and also making sure you have the right people on the call early on, rather than waiting until your proposal goes in to some director and you're just some nameless proposal that they don't even know. Hopefully this helps you guys out. If you're looking to set up some sort of consulting company, let me know below if that's your goal. And let me know if you have other questions in terms of setting up a successful consulting company. Thanks so much. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.